When it comes to running shoes, there's nothing quite as exciting as a marathon racer. They are a pinnacle of performance and technology. The shoe that you save for your hardest workouts and your most important races. And these are my five favorite carbon plated racers of 2021. Yo, what's going on everybody? My name is Kofuzi. I am a non-elite runner and today I want to talk about my five favorite carbon plated shoes that I would use to lace up for my hardest workouts and my most important races. But before I get into that list, I do want to go over some disclosures. Some of these shoes were sent to me for the purpose of review and some of them I've purchased myself, but no matter how the shoe got to me, no one's paying me to make this video or to include their shoe on this list. And no one's going to get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with those disclosures out of the way, let's talk about my five favorite super shoes of 2021. First, let's start with my favorite, and that's gonna be the Metaspeed Sky. I've absolutely been loving this shoe. I've been using it for 5K time trials. I ran the Falmouth Road Race in it, which is a seven mile and change. It's an odd distance race. It's from like bar to bar. That's why it's such a weird distance, but it's a seven mile race, and I use it to race the Chicago Marathon as well, and I've used it for workouts of all sorts of distances, and it always lives up to the task, and it's largely in part to that miraculous, amazing, FF Turbo midsole foam that they have, and they've got a bunch of in this shoe. What I love so much about it is that it's kind of like a crumple zone in a car. When your foot hits the ground, it compresses quite a bit, but it also snaps back really quickly and pleasantly. So that way, not only are you getting all that impact absorption, so it's easy on the body, but you're getting a nice little return in terms of the way that foam decompresses. Plus you've got a carbon fiber plate in there that is rigid enough to give you a strong push sensation with it each step, but also flexible enough so that even runners of my skill level are able to load it properly and get the full potential out of that carbon fiber plate. The upper is pretty stripped down and minimal, just how I like my racing shoes. I will say that the shape of the toe box is a little bit unusual and that it crunches my toes a little bit. Other than that, the shoe is extremely forgiving on the body as far as a racing shoe goes. Whether it's a tough workout or a long race, the following day, or maybe it takes a couple of days to recover, I'm feeling surprisingly good. And so not only does this shoe perform on the day of the race, it also helps you to bounce back quickly afterwards. And because of the way that it can do all of those things that I really need a marathon racer to do, the Metaspeed Sky takes my number one spot as my favorite racer for 2021. Coming in at number two is the Adidas Adios Pro 2. I'm absolutely loving the Light Strike Pro in this shoe. With version two, they've made a couple of changes in terms of some scalloping that they've done in the midsole. I feel like it cuts a little bit of the weight, but also makes it a little bit easier to bend the energy rods that are in there. Now, here, instead of a plate, they have these five metatarsal rods or like carbon rods that kind of line up with the bones of your foot. And that's supposed to help keep things a little bit more stable depending on how you're landing on the ground. I have to admit I can't exactly tell the difference between whether there's rods or a plate in this shoe but what I can say is that the Light Strike Pro is an incredibly pingy type of foam. It's almost like kind of like hitting a racquetball in the sweet spot of a racket. It just bounces right off the ground in a very, very fast way. And that carbon springiness is also definitely there with each step. This shoe is a shoe that I particularly reach for for my very hard workouts because of the fact that 
when I'm deep into a repetition or when I'm deep into a race, I feel like if I really focus on good mechanics, running form, the shoe rewards it. And I feel like there's just an extra special little boost, a little extra something that it gives me back that I feel like there's an instantaneous response in terms of my input and the output that I'm getting from the shoe. I feel like it's always working really well with me. The one problem that I had is that sometimes that light strike Pro Foam is a little bit too firm, maybe a little bit too pingy. And so I'm not getting quite as much of the impact absorption that I love to get in some of the other super foams that are out there. So that minor kind of like qualm that I have with it is what puts it at number two this year as my second favorite marathon super shoe. Coming in at number three is the RC Elite 2. And now that one is kind of like on the opposite end of the spectrum as the Adidas Adios Pro 2, where I felt like the Adidas Adios Pro 2 was a little bit too firm, a little bit too pingy. The RC Elite 2 is very squishy. It's probably the squishiest of the shoes I'm gonna be talking about today. The fuel cell foam that New Balance is using in this shoe is just really comfortable. I recently raced one of my fastest marathons ever at CIM earlier in the month in the RC Elite 2, and I really enjoyed all the squish and the impact absorption that squish provides. It also does rebound really quickly, and it has a carbon fiber plate to help scoop you out of all that squish and push you forward for the next stride. So it's all working really well in a very lightweight package. The upper is really minimal, very breathable, very lightweight. The shoe is incredibly nimble and agile. I enjoyed racing in this shoe quite a bit and I also really enjoy taking it for workouts. Now, while I generally have a preference towards the more squishy shoes, I would think that this would put it into number two spot ahead of the Adios Pro 2. But the reason why it comes in at number three for me is because I feel like the carbon could be a little bit more rigid. I feel like it just doesn't quite scoop me out as much as I'd like. And I feel like I'm losing a little bit in all that squish that's in the RC Elite 2. So that's like the one thing that I would love to see as a little bit of a tweak. We'll see if we get that in the next iteration in 2022. But for now in 2021, the RC Elite is a big improvement over the first version last year. And this year it falls into my number three spot of favorite super shoe. Number four, I'm gonna talk about the Saucony Endorphin Pro version two. Now this is a shoe that didn't change all that much from last year. And I was really hoping for a little bit more of a change because while I think this shoe is fantastic, I love that Power Run PB foam. I love the way that the upper fits on this shoe. It's probably the best upper of the bunch of all the shoes that I'm gonna talk about today. It is incredibly comfortable and snug and just fits on top of your foot. But the only problem that I have with the Endorphin Pro 2 is that it might be too pro for me. I'm just an average non-elite runner. So I feel like either I'm not powerful enough to really load the carbon or it might not be heavy enough. Now I'm coming in at 145. So most likely it's the fact that I'm not powerful enough to really load the carbon properly to use this shoe as a marathon shoe. I love using this as a marathon workout shoe. So even on very long runs, if I have some faster paces, the Endorphin Pro 2 definitely works for me. Or if I'm gonna be racing something like any between the half marathon all the way down to the 5K, by the way, I set my 5K PR in this shoe this year. But for me, I can't take it to the full marathon distance because kind of like the Adios Pro 2, it's a little bit too firm. It doesn't quite compress enough for me, at least in the way that the Power Run PB is set up in this shoe. And so for that reason, it, even though the shoe is really exciting and very comfortable in terms of the upper fit, it drops down to number four just because I don't think I could really take it the full 26.2. Now for number five, I'm going to bring in another wild card that's something that I'm doing in all of my top five videos that I'll be making this year. And the wild card is going to be the Adidas Prime X. Now it's a wild card because it's technically a very illegal shoe to be running in. And so it's not really a racing shoe, but it's got kind of like all sorts of race technology inside. It's got Light Strike Pro in it. It's got carbon energy rods in it. But what it also has is a second layer of carbon. I think they're calling them blades that kind of sit in between another layer of uh, Light Strike Pro. And with all of that, it ends up being a 50 millimeter stack height shoe in the heel, which is like 25% taller than the maximum allowable stack height. So it's definitely not a shoe that you can use if you're planning to win a marathon or trying to qualify for the Olympic standard. But 
it is a shoe that I've absolutely been loving to take on very long runs, especially if those long runs have some faster paces in them. Because of that extra thick layer of Light Strike Pro, I don't know if it's just the extra thickness of it or if they've done something to how soft it is. I feel like that somewhat firmness that I'm getting for the Adios Pro 2 doesn't exist in that shoe and it's just a lot softer for me and I'm able to run very long distances at harder efforts in it and also feel absolutely fantastic the following day. Now, I mean, I'm not gonna feel super, super fresh after a 20 mile long run with lots of marathon pace effort in it, but considering the workouts that I'm able to do in this Primax, it's, I feel fantastic the following day. The big drawback, other than the fact that it's technically illegal to race in, is the fact that because of that height, it's not the most stable shoe. So if you're gonna be turning around a lot of corners or hitting some uneven terrain, it's not the ideal shoe to be running in. So it is pretty wild and can be scary at times. But when you can finally wrangle everything that the Primex is, it makes for a very fun shoe to run in. And because of that, I'm gonna put it at number five for my favorite super shoes. So those are my favorite super shoes of 2021. Let me know if you have another shoe that's your favorite for this year. I'd love to hear about it in the comments or better yet, stop by the live stream that I do Monday through Friday right here on YouTube and we can talk about it in the chat. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?